Scoliosis during puberty, what should parents watch out for? Scoliosis involves the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. In addition to the spine bending unnaturally, there must be rotation to be considered a true scoliosis. And this rotation, this twist, makes scoliosis a three-dimensional condition, and the rotation is typically into the concavity of the scoliosis. Now, not only there should be a rotation and there should be bending, but also the scoliosis curvature measured in a Cobb angle should be at least 10 degrees or greater for it to be considered a scoliosis. A Cobb angle is the gold standard in diagnosis and assessment of scoliosis. A patient's Cobb angle is determined during an x-ray and it's normally taken by drawing lines from the most tilted vertebra on the top of the curvature to the most tilted vertebra on the bottom of the curvature and it can measures intersecting angles which is measured in degrees and the higher the degrees typically means the greater the severity. Cobb angles typically determine either a mild scoliosis which is between 10 and 25 degrees, moderate scoliosis between 25 and 40 degrees, severe which is 40 degrees or greater and then I like to use a fourth category called very severe scoliosis and that's when it's 80 degrees or greater. Now the condition severity guides really the design of the treatment plan and more importantly how severe the scoliosis is and typically as curves get more severe typically the more noticeable the effects tend to be. Now, scoliosis during puberty is a very important time to be monitoring scoliosis because we know scoliosis affects all ages, but it's most commonly diagnosed in adolescents between the ages of 10 and 18 years old, and this is called adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is by far the largest category. Idiopathic means that there is no clearly associated single cause associated with the scoliosis. These are considered normal, healthy children, but for whatever reason, they're developing a scoliosis. And what triggers the progression is growth, which is what happens during puberty. So monitoring a scoliosis during puberty is by far the most important time to be monitoring scoliosis. And if a scoliosis is going to progress, it normally progresses during puberty, and this is when it's more likely to worsen, and it's typically the most common time its curves are diagnosed. It's normal or common for scoliosis to progress, but the degree of progression is unknown, meaning some kids can go into puberty and have severe rapid progression, and other kids can go into puberty and not progress much at all. But adolescents are at the greatest risk for rapid progression, and this is typically occurring because of unpredictable growth spurts and typically as a result of puberty. We also know girls are more likely to develop scoliosis than boys. It's a four to one ratio and we believe this is because girls go through growth spurts sooner and they go through a shorter window of growth spurts versus boys. So we tend to diagnose scoliosis more commonly in girls than we do in, female, than in males. Now what are some early signs of scoliosis in adolescents? Well unfortunately there's no you know, bright light or severe pain that happens when the patient is developing scoliosis. And the reason why I'm saying unfortunately, because if somebody had some very clear indications, meaning the minute they develop scoliosis, start having back pain or start having headaches or start having some symptom that was easy for them to, for you to, for them to identify and can go and complain to you as the parent and say, look, I'm having this problem. You can easily investigate it. Unfortunately, the signs start off very subtle, especially in mild scoliosis. That can be very difficult for people to identify, especially parents or even for kids and normally can only be identified from trained professionals. And very often I see mild cases even get missed by pediatricians that don't focus on scoliosis as their number one um, thing that they treat. So very often the early indicators are normally just posture, uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven waist, maybe a little bit of rib deformity. It can be very, very mild in nature, but there's really no indication or no reason why an adolescent should have posture asymmetry. If you notice any type of posture asymmetry, even a mild one, posture asymmetry in, a, in an adolescent is never considered normal and it definitely f warrants further investigation. Now, unfortunately, as curves get bigger, posture symmetry tends to get worse. However, if it's, it tends to be a balanced curve, meaning we have very equal curves in the lumbar and the thoracic spine, somebody can have a relatively significant curve and their posture doesn't look as bad as somebody who has a smaller curve, but it's only one curve going in one direction. So how the degree of 
posture is always not related to the size of curve, but it's a good start, meaning if you see posture asymmetry, you definitely want to have it evaluated. Now, again, one single posture imaging doesn't guarantee scoliosis diagnosis, but like I said, there is never an asymmetrical posture in an adolescent that's normal. It re requires further testing, and the best place to start is having it screened by a medical professional. And typically, somebody who focuses on scoliosis would be better, but a general pediatrician at least evaluating and looking at the scoliosis. Also asking yourself, is there any family history of scoliosis? Are there other family members that have scoliosis, even indirect family members like cousins or, or you know, grandparents or something along those lines? Because if there is a family history of scoliosis and you're seeing a posture asymmetry, then it is also more likely. Normally, the first test that would be done is something called Adams Forward Bending Test. Adams Forward Bending Test is a very simple test that a patient will bend forward. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the spine, because as they bend forward, the spine flexes and it's easier to see see the spinal alignment through the skin, and you're looking for any curvatures. You're looking for any kind of significant rib differences from one side to the other, any low back differences from one side to the other, and you're looking at the shape of the spine to see if the spine runs straight or if it runs off course. If we see any type of misalignment, that's normally a positive Adams test, and if we see positive Adams test, that typically leads to the next test, which is an x-ray. And an x-ray is the gold standard in actually the diagnosis and measuring scoliosis to the, to the severity that's there, and that'll be able to, for us to determine the patient's Cobb angle. And once we determine the patient's Cobb angle, we'll be able to determine exactly the size of the scoliosis and what's happening. Now, one thing we need to understand that during puberty, curves can progress very rapidly. So one thing that tends to happen if there is a positive Adams test, sometimes the uh, doctor will think, oh, it's not that big. They'll say, well, you know, we'll check it again next year. And let's say this is an 11-year-old girl that's about to go through puberty, and they come back, you know, at 12 years old, and they went, you know, they went through puberty rapid growth, and so now you see this huge curve. So the best way to determine if you're seeing any posture misalignment, you can't just go based upon time, because time, from one year to the next, there could be a lot of changes that it could occur because the person can walk out the doctor's office and go through a growth spurt tomorrow. So you should be looking at not only time, but also growth and height. So if there's any type of postural misalignment, I normally don't recommend going more than three months um, by with the parent to look at the posture and see what's going on and to be measuring height because if there's height changes, that's when curves progress is when they're typically growing. Now, if you're diagnosed with scoliosis, the most important decision that you need to make is how you want to move forward. There are, main, there are two main treatment options. There's something called surgical treatment options and non-surgical treatment options. Surgical treatment options are typically are invasive and they're costly and they have very heavy potential risks and side effects. And typically, these types of uh, surgical options are tending to like do nothing until the curve becomes so severe that surgery becomes an option. And this is what I like to call traditional treatment, which tends to funnel people towards surgical treatment. Non-surgical treatment options or conservative treatment options try to treat curves smaller in size and try to reduce the curve and not letting it progress to a certain level, so therefore surgery never becomes an option. And these conservative options tend to include many types of things like chiropractic centered treatment approaches, different types of therapy, different types of rehabilitations, different types of bracing, and we're trying to preserve spinal function while trying to reduce the size of curve. Now, when we look at scoliosis during puberty, we know curve progression can be very quick. In fact, the fastest progression I've ever seen in a child is I've seen curves progress 60 degrees in less than six months. I've seen curves progress over 20 degrees in less than six weeks during rapid growth phases. So therefore, curves can change rapidly during puberty. So checking your child's posture regularly, checking height regularly can be very important because if you're just watching, you can miss the opportunity to treat the scoliosis during this phase because they can grow so quickly. Even though there's never a guarantee in any type of treatment option, we do know if we diagnose scoliosis early and we respond that with early treatment, the likelihood of there being a positive outcome is much greater. So early detection is normally only beneficial if you respond with early treatment. If you, if you find it early but do nothing and let the curve progress to surgical levels and end up having surgery anyway, it would have been the same outcome whether you found it early or found it later. So we recommend early detection and early treatment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. 
And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.